Hi there, I'm Michael Hill with Canine Chronicle TV. And today for our Influencers series, I am here with Caroline Coyle, and we are going to find out about her journey into the world of dogs. How are you, Caroline? Hi, Michael. I'm good, pretty good at least, and I'm excited to be here. Oh, it's great to have you. I'm glad we got together despite time zones and technical difficulties. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so let's start at the very beginning. How did you first get involved in, in dogs? Well, okay, everybody has, you know, a weird story. So mine was, um, we had a mixed breed, it died. My mom announced we're getting a new dog. Okay, that's fine. I'm six years old. Um, she says we're getting a whippet and that it, mm -hmm. it is a type of hound. And somehow I knew enough about dogs to know hound meant the hush puppy basset hound. Yes, right. And I vividly remember throwing myself on the floor and having a full-fledged tantrum. This is not it. <laughs> I, was, I shouldn't admit this. All my bass and out friends hate me now. It's like, I yeah. will not touch it. I will not pet it. I will not feed it. Oh. I will not walk this dog. <laughs> not so, happy. Not a satisfied customer. <laughs> no, I mean, it's like, I don't know why I just didn't like that dog. So she shows me in the encyclopedia, you know, no, 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 this is a whippet. And I'm like, oh, okay, I like that dog. Looks like a little deer, but there's this dog right next to it. I love, and it's called a Saluki. Ooh. And so that young, I, I just, it was love at first sight. And then a dog show came to town. You know, we were not mm. dog show people, but for some reason she decided, hey, this will entertain the kid for a day. <laughs> Famous last words for the last 50 Five years. <laughs> so, and I, again, remember going to that show and asking, you know, where the Salukis were because I was obsessed already. And, wow. uh, and then blank looks. And so I, we even tried asking where the Salukis were. But uh, so we thought well, maybe we're saying it wrong, and we found <laughs> there, there, yeah, there was a there was a, a handler there with two of them, and I and again I remember they let me pet them. I it was like I was petting, I don't know, a, the, the Queen of England, you know. And wow. they, they I remember they moved them down and back, and I was just that was it. I had to have one. And I had to have a show dog. <laughs> wow. There was no question about it. No question. Every year at Christmas, that's what, you know, I did the whole thing. I want a Saluki or nothing at all. Well, <laughs> I got, I got stuff. Lots of nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Not the Saluki. It would be 10 years before I could get the Saluki. But meanwhile, wow. I had come across a popular dog magazine and dog world that you know you could you could subscribe to and that was Christmas once a month to get those mm. in the mail and I, I read it said your passion like in the meantime too. yeah yeah and then um we got a my we got an afghan as a compromise uh I was not good at brushing hair um, yeah, <laughs> so it's <was> compromise, <laughs> which I trained That's in quite obedience. a quite a <laughs> and, shift from the whippet. Yeah, and and um, and then we got. Uh, she finally. Uh, well, she claims to you know claimed for a long time that saying when I woke her up in the middle of the night and said we really needed a Saluki. That when she said, "God damn it, let me go back to bed, get your damn Saluki," was not actually <laughs> giving permission. <laughs> You're like, but, I'm pretty sure I'm a lawyer now. <laughs> <laughs> but she up. said it, and I was on the phone the next day because I had already joined the American Saluki Association and gotten their newsletter and everything and knew all the breeders and stuff like that. I'd been ready no for way. this. <laughs> so, wow, um, you were prepared. I was. <laughs> so anyway, I got my Saluki. I was 17. I, I was too old to be cute and showing mm -hmm. juniors and too young to be taken seriously by anybody. Mm -hmm. So it was, a, it was a rough going starting out uh, at that time. Um, and and so uh, you showed that first, the first Saluki yourself? I did, I showed, okay. So, <laughs> so he was actually a pretty good dog, I guess, because I didn't know what I'm doing. My first show here, I'm like grabbing it. I had read a book of how to go to, I read a book about how to go to dog shows. Um, mm -hmm. remember it's called Kurt Uncle Box, uh, Love on a Leash. And it okay. said in it, um, get to the show and get your armband 15 minutes before judging starts. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we were in the ring at two. That was 
for Salukis, but um, judging started at 8 a.m., it said. So, <laughs> so we were there <laughs> trying to get that arm band. <laughs> and that taught me. A, so many, many, many years later, I wrote a book called Show Me, and it was for beginners mm. showing their dog. And when I wrote everything, it was so meticulously clear because I was aware. How else would you know these things? Like yeah, you yeah. If you don't grow up in it, it if you're not having someone show you that, it's not exactly. always intuitive. And I have been approached by so many people at shows telling me they finished their first dog owner handled because of that book. So that's been a good wow. feeling. But going back to that day, um, I'm clutching at my dog. He's dancing around. He's not putting his feet down. The judge is beckoning me to the front, and I'm like, oh crap i'm used to be i'm the, you know i was used to getting in trouble at school so, <laughs> so when this old lady started pointing at me i just I'm walked in down the ring <laughs> yeah i was like and she says no 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 come back in here and i'm thinking to myself oh you know this damn bitch now she's gonna give give me a lecture <laughs> you know? and she's like set him up right here and i'm like oh she's making an example of me i was like if i get out of here it's like i am never ever coming to another dog show and i'm mm. i mean tears are in my eyes i'm trying All to the grab at his feet to make him pose and she's like stop <laughs> do it this way and you know she showed how to do it by holding the elbows not the feet mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Said, okay and you'll be number one in winner's dog and he won a major so Look at that. i know and he was entered in three more shows and the next show the judge was gerda kennedy and she's infamous for telling you how fast to go and she would be like faster faster go around the ring no slow down and back so she gave me a lesson and the judge the next day gave me a lesson on how to sh hold the head the judge yeah. the fourth time and we won a major every time we won four majors in a row there each time the judge <laughs> set up the dog we won the breed over a best in show special the last time the judge told me how to get go into the group and what to do and I'm like, oh my God. the dog's finished at 10 months. I'm like, well, this is easy. You're like, well, that's easy. <laughs> <laughs> I know, so easy. I don't know what they're working so hard at. <laughs> no, I couldn't understand. So let's enter him as a special. All I have to do is walk in the ring. The judge will set him up for me. So for the next three years, <laughs> we found out that didn't work. <laughs> and so I had to bird. learn to handle really in the in the best of breed ring and uh mm. by cop by spying but you know going around shows and uh we but my friend and i would we were you know again we were just teenagers we would go to shows and yeah. camp out in the car so we'd be there day and night we'd you know wake up we'd watch the show from start to finish we you know spied on every handler we could <laughs> to, to who were your out favorites how to show. Who, who stood out to you the most um <laughs> I can't say some of the early ones, but so I, I don't really remember who influenced me as the early handlers. I remember yeah. that um, some of those influences probably weren't great. Um, for example, I looked at the women handlers and they all dressed mm -hmm. like they were going to go do the wash, you know, on a rock yeah. by the river. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so I dressed that way too. <laughs> And I, yeah and i remember one day watching glorvina schwartz show her afghan and going oh my god you can dress up and look pretty and still yeah. show a dog and win and so right. she you know i kind of modeled some things out of her and i mean every you know i i um well, jumping it was like a ahead, piecemeal yeah so so jumping so well anyways I, i'll i'll get back to that but but really lots of them and and uh um uh, well in the future you know so i'm jumping ahead so so i had that dog and i did get him he was the, actually the first saluki to be in the top 10 and confirmation show and i mean confirmation obedience and field so oh. did well with him for my first dog wow. and, and i got another <laughs> dog and finished Doing something her. right yeah exactly so um and again, m most of this came from book learning, but also um, the Saluki people were not very welcoming. And mm. those that were, when you ask them, they're, you know, Saluki people are great at lore. They could tell you about the kiss of Allah and the speed streak and the what the Arabs would wear. 
right and that's nice but that's not what i needed to know <laughs> yeah you're not trying to be a historian you're trying to show your dog and breed your dog yeah so, yeah. so i went to the afghan ring and those people were mm. very welcoming probably because i didn't have an afghan and um smart though yeah and so they taught me about footfall and breach and drive and angulation and top yeah. lines and Structure, and you know the more analytical time. stuff and that was it was a group of people in this north florida area I, I would say led by linda shipley who later became president of the afghan hound club of america so mm. i would say that you know as far as you know mentors she and her friends were probably some of the earliest ones um yeah and uh and, and i imagine in your breed there wasn't that many people even period to, to choose from in your area not not a lot and uh and again they just i think i was sort of regarded as a young upstart to be sort of yeah. you know pushed out it wasn't a fit they weren't nice let's just put it that way <laughs> someone were me you we know like here's that. the thing that i learned you know the two first people who were ever nice to me in dogs sunny shea of grandeur mm. afghans i mean holy she did a, a celebrity <laughs> and she yeah. was nice to me and yeah. and you know best in show at westminster and then mimi carlisle who'd won the group at westminster with her saluki she was nice to something. me yeah and so what i learned from that is you know what when you're at the top you can be nice to people or you will be nice to people it's the people at the bottom who are so worried that you're going to catch up with them they'll do anything to stop you down. exactly yeah. so i mean one thing i even wrote it on a piece of paper and i have it somewhere to this day and it says i mean i wrote it in a very down day when i was in my teens i said never treat people like they're treating you mm. and, and i say that and you know i can't say i've always done a perfect job but but it's always been in the back of your mind exactly even when it's hard that yeah even you know if it's someone's first day at a dog show or their 50th yeah. year you know especially the newcomers though because if you treat them i really think sometimes the only reason i did stay was despite them I mean, it takes a special person to do that a lot of people couldn't <laughs> handle that and they wouldn't do the work they wouldn't yeah. spend the money at the time I, Mm -hmm. I mean, they'd say to me, it's like, well, I've been in Salukis for 20 years. How long have you been? And it's like, I haven't been alive for 20 years. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I'm not trying to say I've been here. I'm trying to learn from you. I'm trying to, to grow. Exactly. Yeah. So, so anyway, there was that. And then um, I would say that a, a, a very influential person who, if I had to pick one person to call a mentor, mm -hmm. was Karen Black who also, uh, you might know, won the Hound Group at Westminster with her Saluki Treasure. Some say yeah. she's the last true amateur owner handler to have won that. But mm -hmm. before she did that, I owned a dog that was sired by Treasure's grandfather. And we had many, many conversations on the phone. I wouldn't say they were so much about Salukis as they were just about, um, ethics and well okay mm. the, the dog who was the father of my dog i think he sired almost every dog he sired was a champion he sired what two national specialty winners the top winning saluki of all time um wow. lots of other specialty winners and that's from four litters now one and everyone wanted to use this dog and karen pulled him from stud and we we're like what'd you do that for <laughs> she says because if everybody uses him at stud then everybody who has one of his puppies just has one in a million you know another one oh sure. another biscuit puppy and she says yeah. you know, if diamonds were so common that we could pick them up on the beach they'd be worth the value is lost exactly and so you know she taught me to have restraint that just because people were coming and asking about using my dog at stud and it's a heady feeling that you know you don't just that you have to think about who already has your dog's puppies and yeah. about the breed as a whole and and it's just this you know you don't necessarily get to do everything you want to do you have a responsibility mm. to your puppy owners and to the breed and and she also emphasized the responsibility we have 
to history of the breed, which was, mm. you know, to publish our dogs, to have them in breed newsletters and, and a record somewhere, whether that's online or, or you know, in, in print. At the time, there was no such thing as online. And, sure. um, and so I've, I've tried to do that. So, um, so I, I would have to say that that was, you know, there were these quite different influence on me. Yeah, well, different. I love that you bring that up because that's kind of an uncommon <laughs> thing for, for somebody to point out. You know, a lot of times it's focused on handling skills or uh, campaigning strategies, but right. that's kind of going almost a, zooming out and kind yeah. of looking at the breed from a, from a large scale mm -hmm. historical perspective. I, I think it, I, I, to me, that was the most important thing and handling skills. I, okay. Well, handling skills. I will, I'll credit Debbie, Butt because uh, mm. we knew each other from field trials. And I think one day she was like, why is this dog losing all the time? And I'm like, Oh, you know, typical reason. She's like, well, that's, just a bunch of garbage. She, she, <laughs> she says no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she was the first. That I I always have a saying, which is there may be reasons, but there are no excuses. And while mm. she didn't put it in those words, I'm pretty sure that was the essence of what we'll she give a loose quote. Me. <laughs> yeah, she ended up. We lived next door to each other for a while because she was visiting me and met her first husband, uh, who was wow. a neighbor of mine. So that was a, a fun time. Um, oh, I bet. We, <laughs> it was it's so it was the florida state university uh student trailer park so if you can imagine i mean wow. this these were like the worst of the worst trailers you could ever live in <laughs> and hers was the worst in the whole place oh, no <laughs> it was like this 1940s travel trailer the rounded wow. kind that would be worth a fortune now but wasn't wow. then. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> and and yet we had running around this place i had a borzoi and two salukis she had oh i don't know how many best in show whippets and a min pen that was became later became the top uh min pen stud of all time star of all time uh, wow parents would come to visit and their giant bluebird and oh we had a neighbor that got another got a whippet because liked her dogs and then my next door neighbor gets a saluki and a little Every compound dog <laughs> is running loose. <laughs> Look at those sight hounds off leash everywhere. <laughs> it was insane, but um, yeah. So it, it it was it was a fun time though. So and and like we did go to shows together, and I I did learn a lot about you know from handling and from her. So um, so that so what, yeah, what? I would say that was an influence as well. And um, I oh. I wanted to, so another influence, here's a story, um, back to my pre-Saluki days. So mm -hmm. this is what a weird child I was. So I lived in Virginia Beach and we would go to the big city of Norfolk, you know, once a month to the department store. And while there, I discovered a book called Champion Dogs of the World. Mm -hmm. And this book had a picture of the most beautiful Saluki I've ever seen or had to that time. And I mean, we would go once a month and I would go to visit my book and just look at the Saluki. <laughs> mm. and, uh, and I remember one day we went to visit it and it was gone and I was just in tears. Um, you know, someone bought it. Uh, yeah. Luckily, it was under the tree on Christmas morning. So, oh, <laughs> so I anyways, it. I pulled this book out because I just wanted to show no you. No way. So I still oh. have it. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, hold it up. And oh there's my God. the Saluki. <laughs> wow. And when I wrote, so so the book I'm most known for writing is Encyclopedia of Dog Breeds. Hold on. I'll hold that one up too. Free yes. advertising. <laughs> Look at that. So, I so, remember reading um, that when I was young. Like I'm talking uh, elementary All right, make me feel really old. <laughs> <laughs> but it had the effect, I'm just telling you. You have a point. So, so yeah, wait, let me find the Saluki page. So anyways, this was the model. That book was the model for this book, which I wanted to have mm. beautiful photography. Gorgeous. And then a section about, yes. you know, the breed and everything and a little uh illustrated standard and uh but that it. in a way that book was a mentor <laughs> because the yeah. same for me honestly like I, I can't i actually didn't know that that was your book but i remember oh, distinctly cool. when i did uh -huh. actually have that same thing 
not a dog family, just having this passion from a young age. 17 when I bought my first show dog, same thing. That's funny, yeah. Well, see, we need to do you. Um, so. Maybe, there might be an idea there. I love it, I love it. So now I wanna ask you, looking back on, on your career in dogs, I have two questions for you. The first is what, and this can be, there can be a couple parts to this answer, but what kind of stands out to you as your most treasured memory or memories in, the, in your time in dogs? And then thinking about that and, and kind of all that it's given to you, what would be your takeaways or your advice for somebody who is newer or getting involved in the sport um, or for, um, you know, pe people who are in the sport to keep in mind around newer people to help set them up for a lasting career and fulfilling career in dogs? Well, okay, everyone, you know, obviously for your first question, it's, it's, it's wins. And mm -hmm. I would say that I was as excited over that first point win, which was a major, yeah. and the first time I ever let my dog go at a field trial and he chased the lure, and the yeah. first time I ever won a best of breed, and the first time I ever won a best in field, and yeah. first time I ever won a best in show. <laughs> um, Nothing like the first, right? <laughs> yeah, it's those first times, um, but I guess, winning the national specialty was, you know, especially, mm. I, I guess when I, when I look back, cause it was one of these days where I was in a bad mood and I was like, I'm not even going to groom the dog, you know, and mm. I kept, he kept making cuts and he kept making cuts. And then finally at the end, I'm like looking around and going, damn, Maybe we're I should have groomed the <laughs> dog. We're right in here at the end. Get it together. <laughs> And, and I remember calling my mom afterwards because she was like trying to make me not go, tell me I was going to lose and everything. I said, all right, well, it's over. Um, she says, well, that was a waste of time, wasn't it? And I'm like, not so much. We won. Ah. <laughs> and she, so she says, oh, oh, well, that's nice. Um, who? okay uh and I, I i said well you know i may have to be i can't be on the phone long because I, I have to go get a picture really are you going to waste more money on pictures <laughs> and I'm like, it's a good thing like, you had her pushing you from day one <laughs> and she's like she's uh what did she say she's like well who won the whole thing i said well peppy peppy won yeah oh i know God. she says well who won no that's not what i mean I, she says who won best of breed <laughs> i said no, I said, Peppy won best of breed at the national. <laughs> and so in classic mom style, she goes, oh, did you know the judge? <laughs> <laughs> I think she's a secret to your success. I think you pushing against her just made it. <laughs> drove yeah, you even harder. So, so anyway, so yeah, that was, that, that was probably the most exciting. We also won, um, probably the other would be best in show at the NOHS finals because mm -hmm. that was, you know, the first time getting to be in the midst of a big, yeah. uh, whatever, arena. And I had just, All you know, owners. A, a, yeah, and a dog I just adored so much and loved being in the ring with. And mm. uh, yeah, we've been in that ring a couple other times and, and that's been fun, but um, but that particular one was was a lot of fun. A grand but I would, you know, Yeah, but but, but as far as wins, it's, you know, I, I, I think, I think your best of breed win or your major win or your first point win truly can be as exciting as a best yeah. in show win. It really can be. It's for sure. I agree. And I think there's something so empowering about that first time where it makes it yes. real. Yes. And then you're going to the show, not wondering if you're knowing that you can't. Mm -hmm. And and I and I also try to keep that in mind when I see people because I, I remember one of these early times uh, talking to a very established breeder, and you know she casually you know crammed her winner's ribbons in her pocket, and my mom and I go home and we're like, oh, you know she took those out and ironed them afterwards. <laughs> and of course, she, <laughs> she's been doing this for a hundred years, and and I try to remember now that when I win something. And I don't care about the ribbon, but I try mm. not to let someone who would care about that ribbon see that. Such a know? good point. You always Absolutely. have to realize that they're thrilled for their win. And, and, and it's one reason I love having new people, newcomers 
uh, as my puppy owners, it's a little frustrating. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're like, why are you such a bad handler? Mm -hmm. But on the other mm -hmm. hand, when they win a point, they're so yeah. happy and you There's get so to much relive joy. that. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's, you know, whereas some of us, it's, if, if you, you know, it's like, yeah, we want another point. We want another major. It's like, okay. Right. Well, we'll and also this. like, you know, you can look <laughs> back on when you didn't have a support system or a cheerleader, you yeah. know, her role on the sidelines as the breeder of your dog or at the show kind of being there right. and that kind of can color your, your joy in that moment even more. Yes, exactly. And my breeder of my first dog was a very large kennel, Srinagar Kennels in California. And of course, I'm on the East Coast and I'm a very shy kid. So it sure. never, ever occurred to me I could call her up. You know, I was right. a letter writer. I was like, you know, dear Dr. Lucas, Baja uh, just <laughs> won. <laughs> you know, he just finished everything. With all majors. <laughs> you know? it's like, it was very formal. <laughs> And it never occurred to me that she probably would have loved for me to pick up the phone and call her, yeah. but I just didn't have the nerve to do that. Yeah. So. <laughs> so speaking um, of the newbies or, you know, younger people, what are the things you keep in mind for them or you share with them or encourage your colleagues to do? Well, I, you know, I think like everybody, um, just keeping it fun, keeping it fun yeah. for the dog, keeping it fun. You know, it's, it's when I had that first dog, I had so much more fun at shows. I lost mm -hmm. all the time, but I had you know, I had more fun with the dog. I had a little pact, you know, every time we went to a show, we stopped on the way there or the way back and ran someplace different. Mm. He's, you know, he got to run on the beach at Malibu. He got to run on the beach. It was and, fun for and, him. It was an yeah, adventure, Oregon. a vacation. Exactly. Yeah. You know, we, we, he ran in the mountains. He chased deer Aww. in Virginia. So, you know, and, and uh, got lost in Texas, <laughs> but only for, you know, half hour, <laughs> um, but, but it was always an adventure. And, uh, and now, you know, I, because I have so many more dogs that I take with me, we don't really, and sometimes even when I only have one or two, I don't take the time to do that. And I miss those days. And I, I think they're very valuable to anyone starting out, you know, if they can, the more of that they can do. Um, yeah. And uh, as far as, you know, what I would like to say to, to people, you know, it's like some of my mentors now are the people that are just starting. I'm surprised how much I can learn from someone who's been in the breed two weeks, you know, or two years yeah. or something. Fresh perspective. They these, yeah, they have these insights, you know, and so you have to not put, you, know, you can't walk around going, well, I've been in the breed for 50 years, you know, and yeah. I know it all because that's how you don't learn anything and you become old and, and you know, maybe it's coming from a science background you have to be open to new ideas. Are Always discovering. Exactly. You know, it's like, this right. is what we think now, but it doesn't mean it's the truth. Yes. And just because, you know, you know, it's like, I'll never forget those early days when I really did have something to offer, but no one would listen. And I don't ever mm -hmm. want to be that person. So mm. you come to me with an idea, I'm going to listen. I might steal it, but yeah. I'm going <laughs> to listen to it. Mm. At least a collaboration, you know, a co-authorship. We yeah, yeah, we'll call we it that. Call it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I stole your idea. That's a collaboration. Yeah. <laughs> um, so. But such a good point, though, because I mean, that's, I think, essential to continuing a lifeblood in anything, but especially in this sport, where if people are feeling written off just because of age or experience level, you're missing a whole opportunity there to keep, to, you know, to, to grow ideas and to mutually work together. Now, I think that, yeah, exactly. You know, I was a very serious student when I, mm. of, of dogs, when I began, I could recite any Saluki pedigree. I read every single book there was about yeah. dogs and dog anatomy and genetics yeah. and everything. It, and it changed my course. I went, was an art major and, and I started taking uh, you know, 
animal learning courses to see why mm. my dog couldn't <laughs> learn, yeah. why he was disobeying so much and animal behavior courses and animal sensory well, sensory courses well maybe he's deaf you know how do we make his <laughs> sensory world is so different that i'm not communicating and sure. in doing all this i ended up becoming a getting a phd in neuroscience with the specialization in dog senses so um wow <laughs> so it changed my life and i was you know and because i was so serious about it but i look back at some of those early days and, and it'd be like they would just like oh what do you know look you know here's here's some people that are know nothing <laughs> i don't know right. how to put it who just dismiss think they know everything. close-minded yeah Mm -hmm. No, I think that's a, that's such an incredible point because it like knowledge and and invention doesn't always come from experience. Sometimes it is fresh exactly. eyes. Exactly, exactly. And age does not correlate with knowledge. Yeah. So yeah, um, and I think you made a great point earlier about how it's important to preserve history and mark these moments in time and these 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 progressions that are happening. But that doesn't mean that we hold on to them at the at the expense of growth and progression right we should okay so here's my okay here's me sounding like the old timer <laughs> i Go am uh dismayed at the lack of history that so many of the newer people in my breed have when i present them and say what well, you know speaking of treasure who was only 20 years ago or so dropping the hat to me um and they'll be like who you know, they can't identify a top winner or a top producer from more than five years ago. Mm -hmm. And it's like when I say, well, look, we have these beautiful volumes of pedigrees and dogs. Would you like to read them? I'm like, no. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so I think that, you know, I love Facebook because it actually introduced me to, to a different population of dogs around the world that absolutely otherwise but on the other hand that information becomes very fleeting because a little bit more shallow a little bit more transient exactly. surface level flashed and on and off through our consciousness right. and um while it's a great tool for discussion um yeah I, I don't know i don't i there are limitations there are limitations yeah, to, yeah. To, to all of those it, components it's not permanent i guess that's mm -hmm. that's it so um i wish we could do a look you know i keep saying yeah i should write a saluki book but i haven't <laughs> <laughs> well you know when a great time to start is is now <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> okay, oh well it's, so it's thank still you on the list <laughs> <laughs> on that note thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today Caroline. thank you it's so great this has been chatting fun. with you and had a great time <laughs> thanks a lot bye have a great night bye <laughs>